what we've tried to do is elevate the conversation, not from just printers, but hey, IOTs in the marketplace overall, in the industry, they have become attack vectors. There is, over the last six months, we've had a lot of reports of attacks and they're using IOTs. Printers, historically, are probably one of the most common IOTs in the marketplace. And so what we've tried to do, again, is elevate that conversation that, hey, these are a high risk to our customers. You need to be aware that they're being used as footholds into the customer's infrastructure. So very high risk. Um, one of the things I'm going to do today is I'm going to demo runtime intrusion detection, as Dave brought up. What is runtime intrusion detection? Okay, It is in-memory scanning for anomalies, and basically, we are doing this continuously. We are checksumming the executables in memory, and we're looking for any potential anomalies that could be indicative of an injection attack, malware injection, okay? So some of the questions I get from customers are, well, how does an injection attack occur? What are we talking about here? So basically, any interface on your printer <coughs> on the network could be used, in, used as an attack vector, okay? So it takes one defect for a hacker to find and potentially get used as an attack, okay? So as an example, you've got ports, if you've got ports on your device or protocols that are enabled, those could potentially be an attack vector. And, and the typical way that they're doing the attack is they're looking for potentially a buffer overflow, as we call it in the industry. What is a buffer overflow? That's where you're sending data to the device, and it's unexpected data that the, that the device is not adequately validating. Okay, so that's how you're going to get that. Now, one of the examples uh, we usually talk about is the fact that um, these, these attacks can occur with firmware that's been there for 10 years, whatever. In fact, recent example, let me, have you guys seen, um, Microsoft came out with a notice. Um, Internet Explorer has been out there for almost 10 years. Internet Explorer 9, 10, 11. They have a defect in that code that allows remote code execution, which is essentially malware injection. And I bring this up, that code's been out there for 10 years, okay? It's been out there for a while. Now, it has been actively exploited, which means customer's data is at risk. You know, not a good thing, right? But, but what we found is that what I'm, I'm trying to highlight that even with Microsoft's focus on security, their you know, expertise in penetration testing, they still have bugs in their firmware, the, or software, I should say. The odds are against the manufacturers because all it takes is that hacker, that bad guy, to find one defect and potentially exploit your device. So the, the key is you have to have technology like runtime intrusion detection that I'm going to uh, demo here to be to be actually monitoring for anomalous behavior within the device because you're not going to be able to fix all the defects right all the potential defects are that could be used as attack vectors okay so what I'm going to do if we could put the camera get the camera on for um, the, this printer here we are going to essentially attack this device we I've got my um, my hacker ethical hacker in the back that's going to help me with this. We've got, we've got the um, actual control panel of this printer up on the, up on the, um, going into a sleep mode there, there we go. Um, on the left side we've got this, the, the actual control panel, and then on the right side we've got Splunk. Splunk uh, is essentially a security information event management tool. So there are other tools out there. HP supports plugins to Splunk, uh, IBM Q Radar, McAfee, SimMonster, you know, um, and because we're trying to help customers monitor that data, we don't want them to utilize new tools for doing this. We want to fit into whatever infrastructure they're already running in their environment. Okay, so um, with that, I'm going to have um, An An Antonio go for it. Let's um, start the attack. Okay, immediately, okay, potential intrusion. This is, uh, the system has detected a potential intrusion. Now, the, within 10 seconds, the device is going to reboot. And what we wanna see on the right side is 
There we go. The memory intrusion corruption detected. So potential intrusion. So we're what's going to happen now is the device is actually going to go through a reboot. You'll see it's start restarting. And what it's doing is it's self-healing itself. We call it self-healing. And it's going to essentially flush memory of the intrusion of the malware. And as we boot up, we're using SureStart to ensure the BIOS hasn't been compromised. We're using whitelisting so that we, as we load the code, that it hasn't been tampered with. And we come up in what we call a safe state, a secure state, essentially, that is as representing the device pre-malware attack. Okay, and while this is happening, what I want to highlight too is let's talk about a, you have a device that doesn't have this technology in it. Okay, let's say you have a printer, either a really old printer, the one that Dave was sharing, that, that pie chart that showed the number of devices out there, HP device printers that don't have any security. <coughs> so what would happen? Well, we have an example. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce many years ago they had an attack on their entire infrastructure. They did the forensics. They found that it was, um, they were attacked by hackers sponsored by the Chinese government. What, what, what they found was that basically they went through, they reinstalled all of their um, PCs, their clients, their servers. Months later, they went to go, they, they, someone found um, documents printing with Chinese characters on the device, on the printer. They did their, their forensics and found, ah, the device had been exfiltrating data, sensitive data. Now, for a customer, you know, this could, be, could have been patient information. Any, any customer that has sensitive information that's being printed on the printer could be exfiltrated at that point in time. So if you don't have the technology on there, you won't know that your printers are at risk or any, or, or any of your IoT devices and you won't know that there might be a potential condition in your infrastructure that's putting your entire set of devices at risk. So I think in closing, I wanna make just two, two points. One is um, HP is the only printer vendor that has runtime intrusion detection with self-healing. And the other, the other one is that we need your help to get the word out to our customers to highlight the risks that exist for IOTs and printers. Good yep. marketplace. Great. Oh, Thanks. Siobhan, stay here. Thank oh, yeah. you. Um, Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. round of applause for sure. Thanks.